Today I want to talk about a really fascinating and magical topic, natural harmonics. Hey guys, I'm at the Luit studio in Vienna today and I hope you're doing good. When I first started to play the bass, I heard Victor Wooten's arrangement of Amazing Grace. I was so in love with this tune because it was totally different to what I supposed a bass could do. It was a soul performance and nothing was missing. I had the same experience with Portrait of Tracy by Jacob Astorius, which is just mind-blowing. So that was really new for me and I started exploring. You can do many beautiful things with natural harmonics, so I would say let's get into it. First of all, we're just covering natural harmonics today and not artificial harmonics. When I play the open E string, the overtones, or also called harmonics, are already in there. So the low E includes a specific spectrum of natural overtones. When this is the length of the string, you can divide it into several parts to make the overtones audible. I will play an open E string for you and maybe you can already hear some of them. When we divide the string into half, we get the first overtone. It gives us a note an octave higher, so it is at the 12th fret. How do we achieve that? Instead of pressing your finger all the way down to the fretboard, you just touch the string lightly with the tip of your finger. So let's move on and divide the whole string not into half, but in three equal parts. So the spot would be at the seventh fret. When I play the open D string, the overtone on the seventh fret would be an A. So the fifth. So here is the, the octave higher from D. Okay, when you divide a string not into half and not into three equal parts, but into four equal parts, we're at the fifth fret. And this is the tone two octaves higher than the open string. So that is the open D string. That is one octave higher on the twelfth fret. First overtone. And now on the fifth fret, we've got two octaves higher. Or on the G string. Science. And who would expect that? We are going to divide the string into five equal parts. Um, and you will get the third. So it would be here at the fourth fret on the D string, open D string. It would be an F sharp. Then the fifth fret. So as you can see on the bass you have a lot of options producing different harmonics. If you play closer to the bridge you will get a better tone. Also, I would recommend you to play with the bridge pickup and not with the neck pickup. I will also show you the difference. That is with the neck pickup. And this is with the bridge pickup. Again, neck pickup. As you can hear, the harmonics come out much better with the bridge pickup. Play around a little bit to find the perfect spot on your bass. You probably use these harmonics to tune your bass. 
you've got the same harmonics here on the G string on the seventh fret and one um, string lower on the fifth fret. So that's the same note. But there are a lot of other ways to bring them in a musical context. In a solo piece, for example, like Checker Pastorius, or as I mentioned, the arrangement from Victor Wooten's Amazing Grace. you can easily play chords with harmonics. Or you can add them to your bass lines to spice them up. Have you ever used harmonics in your bass lines? If so, in which context did you use them? I would be very interested in that, so leave a comment. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Also, a big thank you to the lovely people here at Luit for letting us use the studio. I hope to see you very soon. Take care. Bye everyone. For my Viennese friends.